Hey, oh, where would the music go? I just turned it down so I could hear you. Is my yelling silence it? This is Business Pants. It's uh, March 18th, 2020, Wednesday, hump day. Woo. Free flow media, media Damien Rawls, that's Matt Muscardi. Hump day only works if you're at work. Is anybody working? Oh, we're, we're sort of at work. I mean, people are still working from home, I hope. Some some of us, some of you. I mean, we're working Although, and not getting paid. Fine work. Yeah. So, hey, everybody. I mean, is this like, I, I almost feel like we should be n- naming numbering the days of this what my talking to my cousin yesterday she said that yesterday was day two is this would do you agree that that <laughs> would would monday be day one of this crisis like how does this work what well, do you we think? did talk about on friday um when we did like kind of a semi-emergency pod um that mm. it did feel like last friday was the first real day of it in america all right so let's let's officially we're gonna here at free float media we're gonna call this yeah, and that was Friday the 13th, so I like that. One, two, three, four, six. Day six. Day six of the COVID-19 crisis. I mean, I that sounds ridiculous, but I, I have to say it. It's real. So. It's the thing. Yeah. So what do we thing. got happening so that, today? Well, I, you know, we clearly we have to talk about the coronavirus. Um, so we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about universal basic income for a little while. We're going to chit-chat about that. Uh, something we talked about before because... Democratic presidential candidate Andrew Yang actually talked about this and got got mocked a little bit, but now it's back back in the news as as a potential bailout. I'm going to try to uh, continue to try to pick stories that maybe brighten the horizons a bit. In this case, uh, retailers who are actually hiring, and then I'm going to uh, throw it to Matt and see if he has any stories that I, I picked about 50 stories today. See if any of them that he wants to talk about, and finally. Most importantly, I guess, we're going to dive back into our March sadness bracket. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. That's right. <laughs> one of the only, I'm guessing one of the only uh, important media outlets, and that's what we are, that that's, that still has a, has a March tournament. That's true. I have this not March... seen any yeah. other tournaments anywhere. And this yeah, one so is stick kind with of us, fun. People. Yeah, and and uh, educational. It's education. Edge. Wait, edu- edutainment. No, wait. Edutainmentable. We are taking this uh, panic tunity <laughs> to give you some edutainment. So we are matching up thirty-two of uh, the country's baddest and biggest corporations in a in a brawl to see who, basically, who's the saddest. <laughs> who March sucks sad? most? All right. So you want to get at it? I haven't heard the harp and bell in a while. Do you have that handy? Uh, yeah. No, I got, I got everything. Get me going. All right. So there's there's just so much to cover. Uh, uh, every every as everyone knows, every minute is a is a different sort of breaking news story about the coronavirus, depending especially depending on where you live, but really spanning from Australia through Asia, Europe, United States. There's something going on. So we'll try to stay in our zone here, Matt, and we'll we'll tr- at least try to talk about the things that we feel like we're experts in. So let's start <laughs> with the. We're just going to be it's going to be dead air for <laughs> yeah, two let's hours. just dead air. So let's start with universal basic income. And it, it, it uh, here here's the context that there's there Trump administration floated yesterday the idea of sending. I think it was a thousand dollars to every adult in the U.S., which is not quite universal basic income, of course. But then Bernie, poor Bernie, who's getting his butt kicked by uh, Joseph Biden, he called for two thousand dollars monthly cash payments to every U.S. household to combat coronavirus. So, uh, and frankly, Bernie, I'm ready. So uh, I'm. <laughs> Uh, a big thumbs up for me here at uh, Business Pants. But Matt, do we have an angle here? So, well, the the, the I, well, it's not really universal basic income. Like universal basic yeah. income is designed. Uh, think of it like, and Andrew Yang talked about this on the campaign trail all the time. You think of it like um, royalty payments. Uh, when if you live in Alaska, you get royalty payments for oil and gas. Um, Universal okay. basic income is supposed to be sort of a funded program that pays Americans, uh, or you know, uh, if you're not in America, it pays 
universal basic income works anywhere, but it pays you, the government pays you effectively a stipend every month and it taxes or takes royalties from some industry or something that gets produced uh, and uh, and that's how it funds it. This effectively mm-hmm. is an American household bailout because I think um, there is a explicit recognition of the fact that th- there are about to be millions of Americans not working and mm-hmm. companies, there, there's no federal legislation about paid time off. We're the only country in the OECD, which is like major, you know, yeah, producing countries. Uh, the only one that doesn't offer paid time off as a federal mandate. We have incredibly low federal minimum wage, so that's already a problem. And I think there's just about to be a, a lot of people who have no income and can't do anything and need real supplies, need toilet yeah. paper, for instance. Right. Because yeah. Apparently Not to mention it's a, it's an economy that that basically the, it, its fuel is retail spending, right? I mean, well, I think that's going to of... grind to near zero in the short term. And in fact, um, there are stories about Amazon putting the kibosh in anything that isn't a necessary household item. Like, if you're, if well, how, you're do, how I was gonna, yeah, how does Amazon know? Like uh... I, for instance, was thinking I, I was about to order a um, from China headband. Right, you ready for this? It's a headband, a, a Bluetooth headband, with with uh, you know headphones, but you know speakers in the in the in the headband. In the band. So that I could freaking go to sleep at night because I'm so panicked. So I could listen to my music and podcasts, and that, to me that's essential to get through this. But what does Amazon think? Amazon thinks um, you... <laughs> is that essential. <laughs> I'm pretty sure know. that's not non-essential. Yeah. All right. Um. But but uh, I think that that's that the point of the, this pay this this mm-hmm. if they do cut a check to every American household or Please. American adult, Please then um, the point of that is effectively an, a household bailout because so many people do not have paid time off. They do not yeah. have access to capital. I have a friend who works at Whole Foods and they basically said, if you're uncomfortable, don't come to work, but you're not getting paid. And it's like. That's a tough. I mean, works for. I mean, works for Amazon. That's a tough spot to put someone in. Like, yeah. I, like if you're if you're quote unquote uncomfortable with a global pandemic, yeah. Then you don't have to come in, but we won't pay you. you you're making them choose between m- money, which is required for living, and COVID nineteen, which is mm-hmm. possible death. Or, or yeah, or spreading death. Or, or, Even or, if you're, yeah. or, or you're young and healthy, carrier. yeah. I, and I will say, um, <laughs> oh. I will say there was a. I so I went out last night. Um, oh, I went good to for go. You. I, what, I had to did go, you go to the beach. Shopping. No, because you can't get any deli- anything delivered. Did you anymore. go vaping on the beach with I, your twenty year old friend? <laughs> I was. I had to call my wife while I was out because I thought this was simultaneously hysterical and terrifying. The only people I saw out, for the most part. I mean, I went to the grocery store and got like, you know, some basic stuff, but the only people I saw driving out and around, mm. th- they were all like 16, 17, 18 year old kids. And you oh, could yeah. just, you could just see them in their cars. Like they're like ripping by me in cars. You could just see them. They wanted to roll down the window and be like, fuck you, boomer. We're going to survive. Like it was literally like, this is the yeah. adult virus and they don't have to care. This is like their their get out of jail free hot boxing party for the the ages. For for once, um, like they are free to roam the earth and no adults can go outside. Can you imagine being like sixteen? For now, now? for now. Yeah, until it Uh, mutates and kills us all. I I would like to think that you know the the old man in me now thinks, oh, I would never do that. But of course I would. You would. Are you kidding? (laughs) Especially to get out of my house, just to get away from the misery of it all. I mean, how much? pot can you smoke in the basement before your parents figure it out you have to go out yeah, yeah. no i mean plus i mean you just have that you have the world to yourself so i i i, th- I, I think there's an important distinction between I, I know andrew yang who i like a lot is taking a mild well, nobody else lap. did so yeah, I yeah. Know, no one did um 
uh, he's taking a mild victory lap about UBI, <laughs> universal basic income. That's not what this is. This is a bailout of the American public. And it, it, because it's an unfunded. If, if they change this to be like a funded program that's supposed to last yeah. in perpetuity, then you're talking about UBI. That's not what they're talking about right now. Right. But there's some correlations. Yeah. They're just um, cutting checks to people. That's the only correlation. Uh, well, checks the people. That's something. Uh, I don't know if you posted this uh, picture on the on the slideshow that you're presenting live. We're broadcasting live where? On Periscope, YouTube. Periscope, YouTube, Twitch, Twitch uh, Africa TV. Um, uh, we're, we're live in South Korea. Everybody, a, while you're home, turn this on, man. There's a depressing infographic uh, from the New York Times called Estimated Workers Without Paid Sick Leave. That's here in the United States. And if you just pause on that chart, I don't know if you've seen that. It's the bottom of our of our news feed that I created. Uh, it's pretty damn depressing. The biggest one is McDonald's at 517,000 estimated workers without paid sick leave. Uh, up next is Walmart with 347,000. And then it's just all over the place. You know, pick a, pick a circle. Dunkin' Donuts, 97,000. Panera, 58,000, Pizza Hut, 156,000, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's maddening. It's, it's depressing. The there, U.S. alone, just... too, right? And these are all the – yeah, and these are clearly all the companies. I'm, I'm just – by just looking at it, like, you know, Old Navy, Jack in the Box, Kmart, these are all the companies that no one's going to be going to anymore. So, um, yeah. All right, well, <laughs> that was a weird bell. Well, let's – um. We're moving I just want to – I just want to see if we, we have anything to say about the companies that are hiring, because this is sort of intriguing to me. Um, you know, typically in a situation like this, although uh, typically, I mean, there's never been a global pandemic that I remember. Uh, you know, the medical the health workers are the are the, you know, the, clearly they're the the heroes and uh, at the moment. But but someone else that kind of feels like that to me too are the are the grocery store workers. Um, so Amazon is pledging to hire 100,000 people. Amazon, not only do they ship a lot of crap out, but they also own Whole Foods. And then there's another report today that from Kroger that Kroger has hired more than 2,000 people in the last week alone and uh, have 10,000 more openings based on increased demand from the coronavirus outbreak. So this is... Uh, I don't know. I just find it fascinating. You got anything to say about this? I do think there's a um, there's a weird economic flip happening because people mm -hmm. are so focused on like basic needs right now, mm -hmm. like food and you know sanitation and um, that that uh, that it, there is a fascinating like it's almost like um, it's it's like the holiday season rush for you know retail in this country where it gets nuts and everyone there's a lot of like right. holiday season um, uh, uh, hiring. This mm -hmm. is the this is like the basic needs version of that because we're in a pandemic. I'm not sure it's altruistic of the companies. I think it's it's much more a reflection of it's a supply demand thing. It's like the companies that are going to come out of this are the ones that supply basic needs. And right now there's such high demand that, that they're, they, they need the help, but what do, you what do you, what do you think the government would do if, if a company like Target or Walmart, you know, they, that provide these groceries, what if they wanted to shut down? You think the government would let them? I don't, I, I, I don't Just, think they could. I, I mean, I guess there, they there would, are places in the country where like Walmart is the store for right. miles and miles and miles. Can you Too imagine if they to forced them to close. shut down? You, you couldn't get anything. But what if the, what if their employees start to get infected? I, the whole thing is just, yeah, I, I guess that's what, that's the point here is that it is unprecedented. And, and when I talk to my friends or family or read news and all that, it, we're, I, I think there's a realization that we're all just guessing, right? It's, this is just like a huge guessing game now. I mean, Munchen, the, 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 what is he? The, the, what is Munchen? The, the, the head of the, he's the, sec he's the secretary of the treasury, treasury right? Mm -hmm. He said today that he promised that the, unemployment the, the rate. Pinky swears? 
it would not fall to 20 percent in the united states and i just i just love it because it's like how the hell how the hell do you promise that you know like you also how do you, how, you can't you know you, anything when you make up how you count unemployment right like if somebody right, if somebody uh had, was part-time or a contractor and they're no longer working they're not unemployed uh because they weren't technically employed you could count that in weird ways but that I mean, that that yeah. notwithstanding i think i, I so, think the the point yeah. is the point is um like the i i think you're right that like these cashiers are and retail like sort of basic needs retail workers are at the front lines of this thing and like my friend are put in a position where it's like it's it's money and risk exposure or no money and um and be safe i i think them the hiring spree reflects the demand and it probably also reflects the fact that there are thousands of people who are working who who are saying i don't want to take the risk i'm not coming oh, to God. work and they, yeah, they, yeah. and they're hoping that like you can get all those 16 year olds who were flipping me the bird last night, like, uh, mm-hmm. in, and telling me, uh, uh, okay, boomering me in their cars. I, I mm-hmm. think they're hoping they can hire all those kids who don't care, care about being carriers are not afraid of this thing. And yeah. you got workers. Um, and well, if the they fear, get the, infected, they just, uh, just don't, you know, hope you don't, the pass fear goes in, the fear goes in both directions. Cause I also have a buddy who's at whole foods, who's actually working a lot more now. Um, he's doing a lot more behind the scenes with like, just like shipments and stuff. Uh, he's actually somebody who was laid off by our, our former great mothership, um, MSCI, but How the fear goes they? both. I know the fear goes both ways, of course, because he also, uh, what a terrible time to lose your job. Right. Oh, I mean, killer. So it's like, he's not, he, he doesn't exactly want to give something up despite, fears of going in it's just like a, it's really an impossible choice but yeah he's he's staying with it and yeah i mean i don't really blame him to be honest yeah the caregiver we have who comes and watches our kids who we've known for a decade um she th- she's amazing her her husband's brother lost his job yesterday Oh, yeah, he yeah. Fly, he got like laid off right. yesterday, and not yeah. from like you know a massive corporation, like from a local plumber. And yeah. it's like, what the hell are you gonna? You can't exactly yeah. go to interviews. It's not. Well, I know, I know. It's just I, heinous. Yeah, we have the same same situation here. Um, a family friend who my wife is working with on a project was laid off on Friday, and. Her, her only real backup thing is real estate. And I mean, that's not going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, it's yeah. All right. Well, I was trying to prevent us from getting low. I mean, the, the one thing <laughs> we talked job. about this morning, the, we talked about this this morning. We don't have to go into it today because we could reserve this for a, the next 100 shows. But th- there is the, the fascinating thing that does circle around all of this is at least for me, uh, who complains a lot about you know the, the system is what will the what system. could change what will change is this is is all this is really is a secret win for the climate crisis like like I keep the, the optimist in me I know you hate the optimist in me I know I know it's a silly kill your person, optimism but I do I, I sometimes I wake up and I think this could solve the climate crisis. I, and I really, and I, and I don't want to get into it here, but I could tell you why I think that because I just really believe that this could be the moment where we could rethink and reshuffle a lot of our priorities the, and, and start to so, start to solve other long term problems. The irony being that the climate crisis it, um, could also kill the virus because it can't survive in like eighty degree weather. So, <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> uh, all right, so I'm gonna, uh, yeah, bell me out of that. Before we get to March sadness, our March sadness bracket, the top 32 saddest uh, teams in America, do you, I know there's a bunch of stories here, like, do you want to cover anything else or do you want to just get out of here? So I, 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 I don't know that we need to cover a lot. I did, there was one story that I think we should talk about tomorrow when we do biz nuggets, but. Um, what about the Mark Cuban buyback thing? Oh, okay. Let's talk about that. Um, yeah. Cause that, that's our wheelhouse. And I, I like this one. Um, I don't know how you feel. Yeah, so, so so lead 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 me into this one. And I, so I, I like uh, this Mark one Cuban does Mark Cuban need an introduction? I Billionaire don't think entre- so. entrepreneur, Mark Cuban, owner of the 
Dallas Mavericks. I don't know what else he does. He's on Shark Tank. He is probably our future president. Who knows? He came out and said that companies who receive federal assistance in response to the coronavirus, a.k.a. a bailout, should be prevented from buying back stock ever again. Ever. I love it. What do you, th- do you think? I, I, I just think it's perfect. I think this is a perfect populist math. What do you think? I love the ever in there. Yeah. Screw um, you. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but buybacks i mean i'm glad that we have a chance to 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 talk about buybacks again because we talked about this yesterday i think i mean we tried to cover buybacks in our research department at our former job and nobody cared we couldn't figure out a way to talk about it in a sexy way even though it does seem like there's something really important about it we put out some boring papers about it sorry to all you who wrote those papers but this is finally the moment where Buy box, buy box kind of hit the populist fan, and I'm just so happy about it because I because buy box just make me want to, you know, put on my adult diapers and go to work. <laughs> Are, I'm wearing adult diapers now. I don't need to talk about buybacks for that. <laughs> I, I I just just as a reprimer for yeah. anybody who's watching yeah. this for the first time. Which how make dare you? How dare yeah, how you dare watch you? this for the first time right now? You should yeah. have watched it for a, ever. Well, um, at least since January, where we started talking about coronavirus. Earnestly, honestly, sincerely, we were right? so far ahead of the coronavirus story. It's brilliant that nobody listens to us because we oh. were really far ahead of it. Uh, but yeah. just so you know what a buyback is, uh, a lot of companies uh, will go out uh, and instead of paying a dividend to their investors, um, they'll like grease the palm of their investors by announcing uh, a repurchase of the shares that are in the market that does uh, that accomplishes limiting the supply of shares in the market. It increases the the look of their earnings. The share prices go up. Executives get paid more, and investors get a payout. So, uh, it's really this um, nice greased palm relationship between investors and management, uh, and it it really accrues to nobody else's benefit. No, not employees, not customers. In fact. Um, the reason why we're talking about this so much now is the airlines spent 96% of their free cash flow um, on buybacks in the last year. And now we're asking for a bailout because they have no money sitting around. They basically gave all their money to investors and management through buyback programs. Uh, and the cost accrues to you as a, as a regular human because those same airlines, when they're charging you like extra bag fees – it's because they don't have any cash anymore to like pay rising costs because they spent mm-hmm. all their cash handing it to investors for nothing. So um, right. that's why when we talk about it, we talk a lot about it from that angle, like trying to make buybacks sexy. Um, I, I mean, it, is that what we try to do? Are we making are we making an well, attempt to make buybacks? I mean, sexy? I, look, I don't know. That gonna I work. don't know how. Sick- I don't know how successful we've been with a lot of things. You know, Ever, we're only anything, a few months, anything in our we're, lives. We're only a few months into this, and as much as we beg for people to critique us, we don't get a lot of it. We've gotten some nice five star reviews, but I, I, I was saying to you earlier that I wish we could have some people give us some actual critique. But so if you're out there and you want to complain about us, please do. Yeah, but complain quietly. Keep the five star review and <laughs> well, just yeah, send give us, us an five email. Stars. Give us a five- give us constructive criticism. <laughs> I only mean in the sense that we're tr- what we're trying to do here is bring all of these corporate matters kind of to a popular forefront. I mean, we want to talk about these things intelligently, but we also want to just make them accessible. And that's the one thing I scratch my head about at night. Like, are we making these topics accessible? Because, you know, we've been talking about these topics for at least a decade in a professional setting, and we kind of know how to talk about them. But, you know, we really want we just we we, we know how important these matters are. And. And and again, here we are at this moment, this moment of crisis, global pandemic, and here's a, a, an, a just a, a very concrete reason why some of these things we think they're so important is that here are uh, all these industries squandering away their cash by, you know, just by taking care of 0.001% of, of their shareholders. At the same time, we're talking about like, how do we bail out America? So anyway, yeah. So that's that's my only question is like, are we making it sexy? Well, the way no. we talked about buybacks yesterday, yeah. um, it, I mean, so it's a very very simple way to think of it. Um, and this is it's not a one to one, but uh, but it's just a it's a nice comparison. It makes it more accessible, right? Is 
um, for uh, uh, American Airlines bought back uh, 1.67 billion of, of, sh- of shares last year. And that effectively is 30 days of paying its employees when um, uh, to yeah. be quarantined, right? Like at full salary. Right. And you could pay your entire staff for 30 full days to stay home and not work and not have it be a big deal. Um, not that that's like the trade off necessarily, but it's a way to think about it, right? Like, um, and instead they only have in cash reserves two days worth of uh, employee um, yeah, uh, quarantine. Right. And that's, so, that's a big deal, especially if you think deal. about what a month mean, what a month means to these people that's just a, with, it's their, just with their yeah. bills, with their fact that they're not catching death, with not spreading death. I mean, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a big deal. It's the equivalent of me. I'm thinking like, I'm thinking about my household savings. What if I, what if I had all this cash, rainy day cash, but instead I decided I'm going to put all of it into weed. And I realized that like, <laughs> Maybe I'm the only one who smokes. It's a funny thing. Wait, that that, that's not, you have to tell a false story. Weed. You have to tell a fake story. Don't tell the okay, real but, ones. I'll, okay. What if I put it all, what if I was like the only one in my house that ate Doritos and I thought, you know, I'm going to buy $50,000 worth of Doritos, you know, just in case, just because I want to, I, I just want to have it around just to take care of me. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the equivalent. <laughs> There's not there's nothing for anyone else in my household. Nothing. They don't eat Doritos. That is the weirdest analogy we'll ever have on this. <laughs> it wasn't the best. I'll work on that one. <laughs> All right, let's uh let's get our way over to March sadness. Let's uh, let's reboot the show here. Ready? Here we go. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome to, to, to March March to- sadness. What? First annual March Sadness tournament here at Business Pants for 2020. You wanna, you wanna once again describe from the top what we're doing here. So here's what we're doing. There are 32 teams. Um, those teams are actually companies. Those 32 teams are gonna face off in a March Sadness bracket to figure out which one is the crappiest. Um, the the way <laughs> yeah. the the way this this tournament works, we seeded um, these teams on uh, Monday. And uh, we had a long show about it. You can go back and you'll listen to the seeds, but there are four divisions. Are they, yeah. are they posted on our internet, on our website? They're posted on our website. There's actually okay. a segment um, that's a March Sadness. specifically for March Sadness. We've also posted on social media if you can't find it or just, you know, add us or, or email us or whatever. Uh, freefloatmedia.com. Yeah, go to, go to freefloatmedia.com and you can see um, under, under the lineups. March sadness. So yeah, it's all ahead. there. Go ahead, Matt. It's all there for you to, uh, yep. to review. So, um, uh, but there are four divisions here. Um, the apology tour division in which these are companies who have been apologizing for probably heinous shit that they've done for over the last year or so. We have the CEO's rule division. These are the CEO superstars, the leaders we turn to, um, uh, for better or for worse, uh, and the companies that they lead. Uh, we have stakeholders rule, which are the companies that make a big stink about caring about stakeholders and or um, have done an excellent job of crushing their stakeholders uh, in some way. And then we have uh, the fake public companies. Um, these are companies for which you as an investor can go buy a share of them. And then for that money that you paid for that share, you get zero rights to vote for anything that the company does. They're kind of fake public. They're basically private companies. Those are the four divisions we set up. We've seeded those divisions. You've got one seeds that look like Boeing and Amazon and BlackRock and Facebook. We have mm-hmm. uh, we had a whole show about the seeds today. What we're going to do, we're yeah. going to do two things. Okay. Number one, we're going to go over how a team wins again. Uh, I made yeah. one slight adjustment to how they win because uh, one of the points that like just didn't change enough. So I yeah, back tested. Don't worry about it. Just, yeah. So yeah. We're going to go over how a team wins. And number two, we mm-hmm. are going to reveal Ooh. our brackets. The, nice. The okay. Damian Rollis and Matt Muscardi brackets, who we think is going to win this tournament. The games begin right. on March Woo. 20th. The first game oh, is, that right? is March 20th. We're going to take it. Nice. Um, well, uh, and the if, first round? If your first round goes off on March 20th, um, if you miss the first round, it doesn't matter because no one cares. Just play anyway. <laughs> uh, but the first... I, I've noticed. Yeah, I just noticed. I did a quick Google search for March Sadness. You know, we we had concocted this tournament before 
the pandemic hit hit the, this is the NCAA tournament. So yeah. they've kind of co-opted our March Sadness title, but that was just a pure coincidence. Yeah, we were uh, that's again, what they're calling ahead of the curve. Yeah, that's what they're calling the cancellation it. of the actual March Madness tournament, March Sadness. But yeah, we were we we're ahead of them. So screw you. <laughs> screw you, NCAA, <laughs> not a good, and your billions not a good of way to get losses. Out. Um, although right. you exploit, uh, I, I, for the record here, we yeah. do not exploit student athletes, pay them nothing and, uh, nope. reap the rewards. Okay. Or will we ever, um, instead we exploit comical narratives about companies, uh, and the edutainment value of those comical narratives. Yeah. Because somebody has to, all right. Somebody's got to really. hold, you know, the, yeah, the Facebooks of the world to account. Thank you. All right, so, so you want to get into the, the rules? Just give the rules, and then we'll we'll do the bracket. So let's 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 get into the rules. Right. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna play the music every time we're gonna say yeah, something. Please, new. it's the only thing that keeps me awake. I love it. All right, so if you're watching the live stream, I have the seeds up um, for the bracket. I will go over them really really briefly um, after I go over the rules, but uh, then we're gonna get right into the actual um, brackets that Damien and I put together. Uh, the rules are every team can score three points, as much as three points, okay? A point is scored for one, having the biggest stock drop, percent drop, um, head-to-head. So, uh, for instance, Boeing is the one seed in the Apology Tour division facing off against Activision Blizzard, um, who uh, had to apologize for uh, banning players who had opinions about Hong Kong. Um, and, uh, whichever stock drops the most in the last, uh, in the last, in the, s- since the last game. So for the first game, it's, we're going to do three days, but it doesn't really matter. You don't really care. It's just th- their stock drops more. Um, they get one point. The second point, this music is still going. It's lovely. Yeah. Well, you're, you're still talking. Um, uh, <laughs> I just on, can't get over it. Yeah. The second point, yeah, we're uh, the second and third points we're basing off of Google search trends. The second point will be Google searches, whichever company gets more Google searches for the company name plus the word controversy. So Boeing controversy or Blizzard controversy, they get a point. Whoever is more controversial, who people are searching more for that. And you can get your third point for the Google search of the company name plus the word sucks. So okay. if people search for Boeing sucks more than Blizzard sucks, then Boeing gets that point. Those are the rules. Right. Of, that's how that's how teams win. Okay. Yeah. Don't don't overthink the rules, people. Really don't over. Just when you when you sit look down at the with bracket, this bracket, look at, look the at it and be like, which one is? Just concentrate which, on the sucks. That's really. Yeah. Just the just thing think. Else. Just think sucks. <laughs> and, and ironically, we we use an example of of Facebook is really the duke of this bracket. And and ironically, like in the real world, not only is Duke probably a good bet to win the the whole regular tournament, but they're also probably. A, well, they're the easy bet to be the team that people say sucks the most. So, yeah, so it's win-win. It's like the Pats. Yeah. Now that we have, did <laughs> you right. see that the Patriots dropped from uh, a Super Bowl uh, favorite to yeah. twenty to one odds just by losing Tom Brady? I didn't. That's well, pretty. Can, can I say this about Tom Brady? Um, on CNBC.com, there are um, seven. There are seven like quick story links. You know, at the top of their webpage. And they're all, of, of course, they're about coronavirus. They're about the stock market plunging, you know, all this, this doomy stuff. But number three somehow is Brady picks bucks. So uh, congratulations, Tom Brady. You're kind of more powerful than a global pandemic in some Good ways. Good for Tom Brady. I mean, he's more, <laughs> he's definitely more attractive than a global pandemic. Yeah. So that's I don't know how anybody, I honestly, like, uh, again, we talked about this yesterday. I'm a, I'm a lifelong Patriots fan. Who, who could care? <laughs> I, I, all right. Let's, let's go back to March 7th. Okay. So, um, really what quickly. What am I doing? Am I up? No, uh, yeah. we're gonna. I'm, let me quickly run through the seeds so everybody has them you. in their head because yeah. I assume they didn't listen to our an hour and a half show from Monday where we seeded everything. But you could, you could I mean, go you back could and listen. listen. To it. 
I mean, if you're washing the dishes or you're like sanitizing your your basement pool table, you you could just pop the Bluetooth headphones on and just listen. Taking a giant bucket of isopropyl alcohol and creating your own hand sanitizer. Yeah. Because somebody in Tennessee has been hoarding it. Then this is a good thing to listen to while you're doing that. You don't have to. You don't have to listen to New York Times every day. Honestly, what do they actually give you anyway, except for death and gloom? It's so depressing. Like, listen, this is Uh, much more entertaining. Okay. All right. right, So so what are we doing? You're You're giving the seeds. Music's on again. That means I have to you do want... something new. All right. <laughs> we're going to go what through we, the we're star- seeds. We're going to start with the Apology Tour Division. We'll start with the uh, Apology Tour Division. Um, your number one seed is Boeing in the Apology Tour Division. Your number two seed is Wells Fargo, who is notoriously sucky for creating fraudulent accounts. Your number three seed here is PG&E, the company that lit California on fire. Right. We f- did start the fire, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wow. Uh, your number four seed <laughs> is Equifax, uh, who you can proudly say gave all your personal information to somebody you don't know. Um, yeah. Your number five seed is Johnson & Johnson, who poisoned... Ooh, asbestos in the baby powder. Poisoned your baby's asses. Uh, your number six oh. seed is Starbucks, because um, yeah. they've had problems with anybody who isn't Everything. white. Um, they've had some controversy or something. Everything, really. Your number yeah. seven seed is Chipotle for giving you Ooh. constant diarrhea, and your number eight <laughs> seed is Activision Blizzard. Um, they they are not going to win. Uh, let's just say that. All right, let's go right to the games. Um, me, I'll, let's I'll let's my bracket, bracket them. That's a good idea. We'll, we'll, so we'll, how we how do you want to do this? I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you. My I, picks? I'm gonna is pull it? it up. I'm gonna pull it up. Uh, so if you're watching okay. the live stream, this is Damien's bracket. It's a little hard to see, but Damien's gonna walk through. How he chose the, the 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 winner coming out of the apology tour division going to the final four. Go ahead, start me. Is there something I should be looking at? Just that your you're posting? bracket. Or, That's fine. Okay. Uh, or should know. I just go over the each uh, each of the four games? Go over each do? of the four games. Yeah. Let's All right. That. So I'm going to start with uh, the one seed versus the eight seed Boeing versus Activision. I, look, I, I like. I like the Activision Blizzard story. I, I like that they had to apologize during all that. But that whole China versus Hong Kong thing is is very much history. It's not, it's just completely gone. This is an easy win for me. I got to pick Boeing. All Boeing right. is just a clear winner. Okay. I'm All with right? you. Um, I'm, 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 I'm going to pop back and forth between your bracket and my bracket. I also have Boeing as an easy, this should be an e- okay. slam dunk. No brainer. Yeah. Uh, Equifax versus Johnson and Johnson. This is int- four and five C. This is a, a four and five is always going to be an interesting matchup. Uh, this is a tough one for me because um, nobody really cares about Equifax other than when they're screwing up. And I don't know how they could top themselves at this moment because um, that's that's a screw up for the ages. So it's like, do they have another screw up in them? This is my mindset. Now, Johnson Johnson is also interesting because if without the pandemic, I would say that they're an easy target to suck. But now I'm thinking... Boy, this, they could be playing hero right now. They could be doing a lot of good. Mm. But I don't really believe in their ability to do good. Does asbestos kill coronavirus? <laughs> it should, right? Kills everything else. But I don't I just mostly because I think Equifax is kind of hiding. I'm going to I'm going with Johnson and Johnson here for a mild upset. All right. So think? so I went chalk on this. I picked Equifax. And I picked okay. Equifax actually strictly because um, I think the chances that people continue to search for Equifax sucks um, mm-hmm. because they hate their credit score is is real. I don't think I don't think people look for Johnson and Johnson. I think they look for Equifax because Equifax is in everyone's right. lives in some way. Unless Johnson Johnson, see Johnson Johnson has the ability to hit the headlines now because they're at the they could be at the forefront of this. So they they have the potential to suck. That's how I thought it's, it. It is so. going to be a tight game. I was not right. I was not a hundred percent on this, but I did go chalk on it. Okay. Um, so who do you so have in your gonna three? Stay in the, your three we're going to stay in the first round. Right? Yeah, stay in the first round. Uh, okay. So P G and E, the, the one started the fires, and Starbucks. Okay, P G and E is going through a bankruptcy. I I, I you know I. Luckily for California, any stories about the fires are just, it's not, there are no fires right now. They could come back, but with the pandemic going on, no one's going to be talking about PG&E and fires. Starbucks, look, I mean, they're, they're, they're going to a to-go model right now. I think all their stores are closed. The so the chances luck in of, coffee? 
<laughs> so I, I think that the chances of Starbucks having a major screw up moment are, are a lot lower right now because nobody's going in. So there are no black people that will be told Tossed that they out. can't yeah, use the bathroom. Yeah. So, but I just think PG and E is old news. So I, I'm going to go with the upset here. I'm picking Starbucks. So I also went with the upset, but I, you know, like I was much more on the fence about it because PG and E, um, so they're, they're in these bankruptcy proceedings that, that, what tilted me was the fact that the bankruptcy proceedings are likely to just get like postponed because no one wants to get together right. and touch uh, each other. Um, and now is not the time maybe to make those decisions. But they were talking about handing sharehold, like handing the the public, the 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 people affected by the fire shares in PG and E as redress, <laughs> and that to me <laughs> is like. That, that's what a horrific idea. Like uh, we we've gone bankrupt. Our company's worthless there. You know, um, uh, it's not worthless, but the company has a significantly lower value. What we're going to do to you, poor consumer whose house we let on fire is rather than giving you mm -hmm. like real money, we're going to give you something that has very little value. Um, but you can call yourself a shareholder in our company. So congratulations. Um, but well, it sounds like count. you're making the case for pg &E. So I, this is why I was on the fence, but I ended up going with okay. Star Starbucks, because ultimately right. I think Starbucks is going to, they, they will rule news cycles throughout coronavirus because people, I think when it comes to like useless consumer retail, people will not give up going to Starbucks. I think it yeah, has that not, much of a hold on people. Yeah, because it's not completely useless. It's a, and I, I've, I've always been a long uh, proponent of renaming the coffee industry because it's not coffee industry it's a it's a drug it's a drug it's part of the drug trade i mean it's a God, it's it's up it's with weed it's with alcohol it's with meth i mean it's a it's meth, a drug we're all really with meth it, yes it's a drug we're all i'm not i'm not judging i'm just saying it's a drug Sounds we all judgy. need a drug a drug we all need just like meth and uh <laughs> people especially people you know going to whole foods and working double shifts in the cheese department they're gonna need themselves a nice hot cup of uh, Starbucks. Starbucks is more like, it's, it's not like meth. It's more like a suppository. It's like, uh, it's, it's like uh, over the counter. It's not a drug. Come on. It's a drug. Get over yourself. All right. So we're both picking Starbucks there. So finally, in the apology tour division, we have kind of a bizarre matchup. Wells Fargo at the two seed versus Chipotle, the, the, the diarrhea burrito people. <laughs> I Look, think that's the um, new tagline. The reality is, is that, uh, certainly Chipotle's stock is going to be cratering because it's all, I'm guessing it's all closed up. Um, I just think that Wells Fargo has an interesting potential to screw up once again, because they're, they're just not going to help its customers get through this because they really don't care. So just by that fact, I just, I just believe in their ability to keep screwing up. I believe in their ability to not understand how to, how to help their customers. So I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with the two seed. I'm picking Wells Fargo. I here. think I, I think, I think you're right about that. I, I chose believe in them. The same the way. I do. I believe I, in that. I, I, I chose uh, Wells Fargo as well to, to, to defeat Chipotle, Chipotle here. Uh, and, and, and partially because, um, I think diarrhea is the least of our worries. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Although I, it is a COVID-19 symptom maybe. So we got to be careful Chipotle. You don't want to get false, you know, ER visitors because of your that's your true gross. they could overwhelm beds uh, if there's another <laughs> outbreak so um right. so you're sweet you're coming going into your sweet 16 out of the apology tour division you have Boeing versus Johnson and Johnson and uh -huh. Starbucks versus Wells Fargo yeah. um I have Boeing versus Equifax and Starbucks versus Wells Fargo as well um oh, now all right Want to move on to the next bracket, or how do you want to do this? I actually want to. I want you to complete. I want. To, I want to know who comes out of the apology tour division for you. Already? Okay, yeah. So you want my? You want me just? Okay, I'll, I'll quickly do this. I'm not going to give a big explanation, right? I'll just give you the winners. Yeah, give me some winners here. Now, so now we're beyond I'm, explanations. Yeah, well, cause we'll do that next time when we get to the actual Sweet Sixteen. We'll talk it through. So, uh, I am going Boeing versus Starbucks in my elite. In your elite eight. eight. Okay. So the. And then I'm with you. Get, I have the same thing. Getting through that matchup, I'm staying. I'm going to ride Boeing. Okay, I have a final. massive upset in Starbucks taking Boeing. Okay, out. I wouldn't call that massive. But uh, well, it's, yeah, it's Starbucks an upset. is a is a four seed. I mean, that's an upset. No, Starbucks is six seed. Six seed. Oh, sorry, six seed. That I mean, that's a pretty big 
upset. It is. I, I think Boeing is benefiting from the fact that, that since everything else is sucking right now, it's it's not like the number. It's not in the crosshairs of suckitude. So Boeing kind of wins there. But I again, like I'm going back to my original theory here that people need Starbucks because it's America's favorite drug. So so um, I. Gonna suck less, and I'm gonna go Boeing. So I'm I'm voting with the suppository. So um, you've got <laughs> Boeing coming out of Apology Tour yeah. Division. I have Starbucks coming out. Let's move on to yeah, put cue it. <laughs> CEOs rule division. This is the division that will go up against it, the Apology Tour Division. When we're all said and I remind people at home who are or are not listening, this is all free. You don't have to pay for this entertainment. <laughs> are we calling this entertainment now? Edutainment. Edutainment. <laughs> Are we even calling it educational? Well, it's um, it's uh, audio if you're bored. Uh, if you're... So, all right, C- yeah. CEO's rule division. Um, I'll go through the quick the seeds, and then you can go do your bracket. The okay. one seed is Amazon. Um, the two seed here is Tesla. There was actually we debated that you did not yeah. want Tesla there, but I, I did. I you were wrong. Um, the three seed is Apple and Tim Cook. Mm-hmm. Um, the four seed is Disney and Bob Iger. Um, who's not the CEO, but is the CEO. Um, yeah, I mean, come on, people. I mean, you know, Bob Chapek, Bob Bob, he'll make the decision, and then everyone's going to look over at Bob Iger to, yeah, see, to make wait, sure wait it's a real that guy decision. to say something. Right. Uh, yeah. The five seed here is Jack Dorsey at Twitter. Um, so Twitter's your five. Your uh, six is Berkshire Hathaway and Warren Buffett. Uh, your, your seven seed, um, who is your seven seed? Your seven seed is J.P. Morgan and Jamie Dimon. Yeah. The snoozer, yeah. And and uh, la- rounding out the the eighth seed is uh, Satya Nadella of Microsoft. Um, All right. So, so you, um, uh, who'd you have in your one eight? Your Amazon versus right. Microsoft is one eight, which, is our... which feels like a big game, actually. It is because that's the uh, uh, sadly that's the original sort of coronavirus epicenter in the United States was that Seattle uh, region. Um, All right, this to me. It is it is a big matchup, but I got I got to go that this is a complete no brainer to me. Um, only because I just don't think Microsoft is I don't think it has the ability to to have an impact on anything right now. So I just think Amazon's going to be talked about, and inevitably there are going to be people like me who can't get their Bluetooth headbands from China who are going to you know write that Amazon sucks because of it. Uh, <laughs> So I'm just gonna go with I'm gonna go with the juggernaut. I'm just gonna go with Amazon. I, I don't, don't think to... you're wrong. I agreed, although it was much harder for me to choose because I do think while everybody's working from home, everyone in the oh, universe that's true. is gonna about, be think writing that. Microsoft sucks into you, their Google yeah, Chrome. That's true. Browser. But you know what? Windows Windows ten doesn't actually suck. So hey, Homer. Um, uh, I, I don't love it. Like I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a nerdy Linux person, but I, I look, Windows, look, look, Windows has come a long way. It doesn't really suck anymore. I'm going to say that. All right. You think I, it sucks? Uh, no, I, I would choose windows over everything else, but, but that's, that's not that's because here you're a sheep. there. I, <laughs> I, I did go with Amazon because Bezos right. does have that aura about him. So what do you, what do you have in your two, four, five, you're, you're going to do four or five or you're going to do two, seven. Uh, four or five. Well, right. Four or five. I'm, I'm just going down the bracket physically. Four or five. Number four, Walt Disney Company, Bob Iger. Number five, Twitter with Jack Dorsey. So, oh boy. I mean, the reality is that, that Disney doesn't really exist right now except for Disney Plus. And, uh, and from all the early reviews, I think people are pretty fine with Disney Plus. Um, so, I don't really know where Disney's going to be sucking. I, I I think like most companies, there's their stock's gonna fall, but I think that Twitter is gonna be prey to that too. So I don't see that as an easy win. I, what I think is that the combination of Trump being a racist, you know, xenophobic a hole on Twitter, and just all the other things that Twitter could screw up by having like ads for you know fifteen thousand dollar masks that don't work. I, to me, that pushes Twitter over the top. I think Twitter takes this. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, and I think the only thing, the only way Disney wins this, despite being the higher seed, I think the only way mm-hmm. Disney wins this is if Disney Plus has a mass outage for days. Oh, yeah. I think that, that, that kills Disney. Um, but otherwise, I think this is Twitter's to lose. I think that this is a tight, um, a, a tight little four yeah. or five. Or like it gets rid of all of its Star Wars movies except for that weird one with Hayden Christensen. <laughs> not, not that I'm a Star Wars guy, but I do know that little bit of trivia. Um, 
Oh yeah, four or five. I mean, that's it. Really, that's a pick them. I mean, Which I don't think it's an upset. It gives you Amazon and Twitter. Both of us have Amazon, Amazon Twitter. and Twitter going into the um, the Sweet yeah. Sixteen. Okay, so what do you got for your three sixes? Three, Apple six. versus Berkshire Hathaway and Warren Buffett. Despite the fact that that folksy, you know, folk hero, uh, Cherub, Cherubic CEO Warren Buffett it, it announced yesterday that he is staying home to work and drinking more Coca Cola, of course, because he owns a buttload of Coca Cola shares, and and why not just give a free ad for Coca Cola? Despite all that, I don't think anybody cares about Berkshire Hathaway, and whereas I'm not, I don't see where Apple's going to suck and. And I just think Apple is powerful enough to weather all this. I just, I just, I gotta go with Apple only because I just think Berkshire doesn't really exist. Uh, so I'm with you. Um, Apple is an easy win here. I think. I think that the chances that like someone's Apple device crashes um, while they're on quarantine and they cannot go to a genius bar. Oh, I, I didn't think about that. Yeah, that's right. There's just nowhere to go. And then everybody's typing in Apple or, sucks. And and or how about this? How about like you know, there's just news that Kevin Durant tested positive for coronavirus maybe he tested maybe he tested positive because he loaned his iphone to kyrie irving who also had it and maybe they transferred it through the iphone that would be a good <laughs> but you know that story is going to come out and that's going to really screw with apple yeah until the addendum to that story is kevin durant licked the iphone and that's how he got it <laughs> but I, right. I, I do i do think that um that it's apples to lose at this point i think there's a lot yeah. of ways that apple wins here including the fact that you know the apple tv like their 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 new programming um, uh-huh. mostly sucks so yeah um, it does thank you so i, I haven't that... seen it but i'm gonna agree with you it sucks <laughs> So Apple comes out of the Berkshire battle, leaving us with Tesla and J.P. Morgan. I, okay. I think we both this are going to agree. This is this yeah. is this is strange. maybe it's not that fascinating. This is a slam dunk Tesla, but 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 for okay, I'll tell you why at least. Um, because Musk is all, always in the in the crosshairs of a potential like suckitude. Like people love to gang up on Tesla. Um, and and plus, who the hell is going to buy a Tesla now? I mean, those cars are not cheap. Also. Tesla is like the only company it seems like where where Musk is like doggedly pushing forward. He already said the coronavirus is dumb. The, the factories are still going. He just announced that he's you know he's unveiling his next model car right now. So he I don't think he knows anything's going on. So he is <laughs> so really he could be a sleeper to take this whole tournament. Um, at the same time, uh, Jamie Dimon again. It's like nobody cares about him. I, I think that. All of the uh, financial companies, all these J.P. Morgan types are all going to be kind of equally low at the same time. So I don't know that he's going to stick out. So uh, I, easy, easy win, Tesla. Here's the way um, uh, Here's the way the upset happens. Uh, mm-hmm. Jamie Dimon ends up on 60 Minutes and says that um, paying every American a thousand or two thousand dollars is a dumb idea. Um, right. That's the way. <laughs> that's actually that's. I didn't think about that. That could that could happen. There is going to be a billionaire who is going to step up and it's start whining be and be them. like, "How dare we give people money?" It's How more. Dare? It's more likely to be Lloyd Blankfein or Leon Cooperman. But I was going to say Cooperman's going to take this. Yeah, it's oh, possible. Cooperman's going to say that we should only give money to men. <laughs> So here's who you've got coming out of um, in, in their, your Sweet 16 in the CEO's rule division. Yeah. you got Amazon up against Twitter, which we agree, and Apple up against Tesla, which we agree. Two great matchups. Yeah, really good matchups. So yeah. how, like, uh, go through your winners. Who's All coming right. out of CEO's rule? You know, I could. this is an area where this is like, you know, Michigan versus Michigan State, Duke versus North Carolina. I, 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 could, I could listen to reason for any of these matchups for a winner but here's how i'm gonna stay with um amazon to beat twitter only because amazon is just such a big deal it's always a big deal but more than ever it's gonna be an even bigger deal now because people need it and its ceo is still lex luthor so there's always a chance that he does some weird you know mars martiany bald stuff so i got so as much as i I I, li- I like Twitter. You I'm come stay- here for the analysis. You stay for the, edu- <laughs> the I'm a, education. I'm, a, I'm staying with Uncle Jeff and Amazon. And then as far as Apple versus Tesla, this is a tough one. But I, I love the I love the potential story of of you know my my stupid drunk aunt's iPhone eight gave me coronavirus. But I just 
the potential of Elon Musk to put his foot in his mouth, keeping the factories open. I'm going to go with this. With, I'm going to I'm going to go with Tesla here to to beat Apple, and that's going to give me Amazon versus Tesla in the Elite Eight. And then coming out of that one, I have to keep riding Amazon. I, I just I can't get away from them. And and, and I'm not saying they're going to suck because I actually think that they could come out looking rosy out of all this, but I just, I can't quit them. And I'm, I, I'm going to, I'm keeping Amazon. So I'm going to, I'm sending Amazon to the final four to meet Boeing. That's so, my bracket. So the, the, the sweet 16 matches happen on March 25th mm-hmm. uh, or 6th. Um, and I, I think that there is a remote chance that Twitter's Jack Dorsey is removed as CEO by then. Now? Um, really? During, I, during, I think there's during a, these times? I think there's a chance. I'm just saying it's, 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 it's a, it's a so, remote that chance. That would be so I think, short-sighted. I think there's yeah. a chance. Um, okay. And that would flip the Amazon Twitter game to me. But um, you right. and I are both right. going total chalk. Um, mm-hmm. So in your coming out of the CEO's rule division, you've got Amazon. So do I for all, right. most of the reasons you said, which gives us a final four matchup. Um, you have Boeing versus Amazon, and I have Starbucks versus Amazon. So you're oh, pure yeah. chalk. You're boring as shit right now. Um, That's true. I didn't think about that way. You know, I kind of like your Starbucks choice, but I, I, I'm gonna, I'll just. Well, you uh, have to stick with it now because we just did it. Yeah. Live no, no, I am sticking with it. I mean, the, look, the airline industries are are also tanking, so I, 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 I have that in my back pocket <laughs> as a win. So let's go to yeah. fake public division. <laughs> Big public companies. Um, I need right. an echo machine here. Yeah, you could get that. Um, all right, so y- your fake public seedings are Facebook is by yeah. far the number one seed, no doubt. Okay. Facebook is du- is our two. Yeah. Uh, this is a really top heavy division. Facebook is number one. Google is number two. Google, if you own Google shares, congratulations. Two guys named Sergey and Larry actually own your the uh, the company, not you. So. Um, uh, number three, your number three is Walmart here, another massive company owned by the Walton family. And then it gets a little bit more crazy interesting. You've got Snap at four, Square at five, um, Square being another Jack Dorsey company. Jack Dorsey featured twice in this. Um, uh, you've got uh, your sixth seed is Spotify, your seventh seed is Oracle, Larry Ellison's Oracle. Even though Saffir Katz is CEO, Larry Ellison actually owns and calls all the shots. And lastly, Damien's favorite company, he has no idea what they do, Pinterest yeah. at number eight. What the hell is Pinterest? What yeah. the hell is Pinterest? Right. Ask my wife. She uses it all the time. She loves it. Um, all right, let's, that's a good place to begin. So um, let's start with your 1-8, your Facebook yeah. Pinterest. And, and based on what Matt just said, uh, this is, I don't even have to discuss this. This is Facebook. I, I don't even want to talk about it. Are we we I don't, don't need Pinterest to. Is. I have Facebook, Facebook coming out of there, destroying, too. destroying. Pinterest. All right. So let's uh, go right to your four... Five and five. Snap, snap Square versus Square, yeah. So, and this uh, reflects a, a deep-seated hatred you have for Snap. You really, really don't deep-seated. like. I would call it like a pathological <laughs> hatred of their governance. If that's a thing, yeah. you've got that yeah, thing. I got that. Although I don't, I got no problem with the company itself. It just shouldn't be traded on the stock market. And and yeah, you're right. Well, you had a problem with this at the mothership and the way they treated it yeah. too. The whole Stupid. thing just pisses you off. Yeah, because this is where I kind of lost faith in what we're doing because I was just like... So for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, Snap effectively trades with no voting rights for anybody except Evan Spiegel, the 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 founder of Snap. So Snap is one of those companies that you like go out and buy, and it's just you. The IPO was giving them free money. It it, there you came with no rights and came with nothing, and Damien um was that's a private company. Um, was very upset that they were included in indexes <laughs> and they were considered public and they got treated like a public company, despite the fact that there was a lot written about, is this a public company? Damien did not have that question in his mind. He was very no. angry that anybody would even ask the stupid question. So yeah. who do you have I mean, winning this game, Snap Square? I think, you know, look, like, I mean, Square, uh, we're, we're entering, you know, we're, we're fast forwarding our dystopia. Uh, Square is a, a a great product that you can use without touching anyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like so I, I see Square doing well now. And I just think Snap companies like social media companies always have the ability to screw up. So I'm just going to go Snap. So you went with Snap. So I actually went yeah. with Square and I went with what? Yeah, I went with Square mostly I because uh, I think they're just going to get some some 
rub off of Twitter. I think the, I think the Dorsey, Dorsey connection. I think yeah. um I think what's going to happen is um in the Google search world, right? Like um people are not going to search for something like, you know, square controversy, but they'll search for like the, there'll be stories about you know, Twitter's Jack Dorsey in the midst of controversy, he also owns Square, right? Because he is 84% owner of Square and that'll just pop right. on searches. So I- You might be right. I, I, I think that, right. I think that tilts it. It's not so much that I think Square's worse. It's that I think that the, the way the points are going to work out. So um, so you've got Facebook and Snap facing off in the uh, Sweet 16. Uh, I've mm-hmm. got Facebook and Square. I think it's- It a, doesn't really matter. It doesn't really it's matter. It's like who, whoever goes on a fa- to space Facebook- I, who cares? They're, they're dead in the water. But who do you have in Walmart, Spotify, or 36? Uh, this slot? is a tough one because... Uh, this is not uh, tough. Are you kidding me? It's tough. In the, it, it actually is. And I actually, in some ways, don't like my choice because I, I think Walmart is going to do well through all that. I I haven't looked, but I'm guessing that their stock is one of the only ones going up. I How could it not be? I mean, it's... Because they have two million employees that don't effectively have a job. But it's, but it's I know, but it's one of the it's one of the few like lifelines for us to stay alive as as Trump is about to shut the country down. Here, so it's like, me, I just think yeah, that no. they're I, I look I don't know I just my my guess is that their stocks going to go up and but anyway despite that I still pick I still picked Walmart. Here's here's so. a, let me let me um, read to you a headline from a week and a half from now. Walmart in Wichita found to be epicenter of coronavirus uh, outbreak. That's, that's true. That's what's going to happen. Workers have to still keep going to work. And, you're right. You're and, right. And you're guess right. what? Spotify. Th- does anyone care about th- like the, it, unless Spotify well, has I a do. mass if outage, you to, can't listen. Yeah. If you listen to business pants on Spotify, I, I do care about you. I, we love you. Spotify continue to play business pants. Um, except that love does not translate to March sadness victory. So I, but I, I chose with you. We both chose Walmart. So we're both going chalk yeah. here, but your reasoning, um, to be on the fence is, <laughs> uh, is dumb and terrible. So, um, right. uh, but uh, that leaves us with Google and Oracle in the two seven slot, um, uh, the two seven yeah. game. Um, do we even need to discuss this? No. Okay, Google. it's Google all the way. Um, so yeah. our our sweet sixteen then. You, um, my, yours is Facebook and Snap and uh, Walmart and Google, and I've got Facebook Square, Walmart, Google. Um, but let's I, be honest. This is I think this is kind of a boring bracket because uh, it's just it's obviously going to be Facebook, Google, that's and correct. Eight. And then I think Facebook will destroy Google. Well, maybe not destroy, but I I just see them coming out. I just see them in the final four. I was way on the fence about Facebook versus Google. Um, Really? Yeah, because I think, I think, um, I think I chose Facebook also. So I'm with you. But I do think that Google gets a tremendous amount of ire. And Google's just released this like weird COVID-19 screenish kind of thing that's like half-assed, as mm-hmm. I understand it. Um, I think um, if they— Google? Tr- no, no, no. That's, that's not accurate. The, the, the reality is that Trump lied and over, oversold something. So— Right, but but Google is going to be the one who bears the brunt of that lie. I guess. I, I, I guess. Hope, I would hope it was Trump. But yeah, sure, maybe. I, I just I, I think there's a potential here that you know, people conflate the two a little bit. Um, I have Facebook. By the way, the stock anyway, market yeah. has just triggered another circuit breaker. The trading All stock. Right. All again, right. Again, I think. Again, I think that's cheating. I think. Whatever. Um. I you know, like for what it's worth. Uh, if you are sitting on any cash that's like you can you can afford to lose some, um, which is like none of us. But if you were, now is now is when you start buying in little increments over like a month or two. Just buy a little bit every day. Don't over what, buy a little what? You buy a little bit of the, just the market. Just buy okay. like a market ETF. If you if you can, if you can, if you, if can if, you have to be able to afford to lose it. But um. Like this thing, market's not going to go to zero. You're going to dollar cost average. Everything's going to be cheaper now and it's going to get cheaper. It's probably still going to go down, but that's why you buy a little bit every day, not like all at once and say, this is the bottom. Don't time it. But if you, this is when, um, this is honestly how millennials are going to have retirement. If you're doing it now and you're starting to buy a little bit now, not a lot, just buy a little every day and do it for six months or a year. And then sit on it. 
that's your entire retirement because coronavirus will not last forever. Climate change will, but coronavirus won't. So you uh, you can make some money. All right, let's get back to the bracket. All right, let's get back to the bracket. We've got Facebook um, as an easy one coming out of the fake public division. Now let's move on to our final division. Yeah, this will be a tougher one. Stakeholders rule. Division for stakeholders and by stakeholders. Uh, all right, so our stakeholders rule division, um, our one seed here is BlackRock. We went over why. Um, if you don't understand why, um, I suggest you go back and listen, but BlackRock's our one seed for a number of reasons. Uh, our, our two seed, um, uh, we had a lot of uh, disagreement in this division in particular, but our two seed is Uber. Um, our three seed is BP, the oil giant. Our four seed is McDonald's. Um, uh, five was Goldman Sachs. Six is Exxon. And some of these seeds are like Damien wanted to see the two teams play each other. So I did. I did. Uh, and it's then, my bra- it's my bracket. Um, and, then, and then your seven seed is Lyft and your eight is General Motors. So that is your um, view of the stakeholders rule division, which Damien, one eight yeah. is BlackRock General Motors. I think this division has the most upset potential of any division. Yeah, starting here, I'm actually going for the big. My big here's I my like big upset it. of the tournament. Broad. I am, I'm all in on GM over BlackRock. That's all a, in. That's a bold move. GM over Who's, BlackRock. Nobody, nobody in America, sadly, and I'm, I'm definitely included in this. Nobody will be making a, a, a purchase of like a car right now. I mean, it's, it's ludicrous. And, and uh, you know, there's, there's. There's also just a lot of potential for for GM workers to suffer through this, and yeah, and to me, it's I'm going, I'm picking GM. I didn't have to think about this one much. I, a, I I went with BlackRock. Um, what? Yeah, of course. Uh, I think uh, I think there's a potential that, like you know, uh, as the markets continue to crater and mm-hmm. ETFs are put under strain, I I I, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, you I think represent someone, the smart person no, in this relationship. I'm not sh- <laughs> I'm not sure that's I couldn't true. have. I, I couldn't have. I, I couldn't have managed to think that that level. Well, I, I think that. Um. Um. I think Black. The Larry Fink, who uh, is the CEO of BlackRock, wrote that stakeholder letter. Um. Uh. Just like two months ago, I think that letter comes back to haunt him. If uh, we're going into proxy season here, I think there's going to be some stuff that sort of like they can't vote in a certain way because of the way markets are now, and I think it's. I think um, by the time we get to the end of this, I, I think that they, they're going to be there could be more controversy. That's just right. That's just my gut All right. sense. All right. Um, but who do you have I'm in the going, four or five? You got yeah, me? I'm going GM. All right. Uh, four or five McDonald's versus Goldman Sachs. This is another one that I thought was kind of easy for me. I just I just think the potential of McDonald's sucking just is amazing. I just love the idea. Of McDonald's sucking. So yeah, well, I go. think McDonald's having you know five hundred thousand workers that don't have paid time off is it, it's it's actually a much easier win than their seed would right. suggest. Right, they're, they're the you. they're the unfortunate winner in the New York Times uh, uh, article about estimated workers without paid sick leave. McDonald's number one, five hundred seventeen thousand workers. I call that a said. win. So, um, so that that gives you a black uh, General Motors and McDonald's. Um, yeah, uh, Sweet Sixteen. And it gives me BlackRock McDonald's into the Sweet 16. Oh, boring, boring. Um, Mine's better. But you've got BP and Exxon coming up here in the first round. Um, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know how to do this one. I, I, I really, I, I, if I squint, I don't know the difference. So I, I just went with Exxon because I am a Gen Xer and Exxon equals evil. So I just oh, picked the Exxon. That's sorry. We, we, we remember the Valdez well. We're supposed so to be that, free that, range that, analysts. That's your analysis? We, that's my analysis because, uh, you know, one of the points in our category is people, you know, is Googling whether people said Exxon sucks. And I just think that there's a, Who Googles there's a high that? probability. <laughs> Who Google? No, BP wins this game. And I'll tell you why BP wins this game. Because oh, BP wow. is wow. BP is in the news like now for saying stuff about being carbon neutral and like you know and and not to mention that um they they have a new CEO who basically steps in in the middle of a coronavirus outbreak. Uh, I I think Exxon is going to be the forgotten you know um killer of the environment for a short period as everyone focuses on the f- fact that BP 
he's talking about, you know, how it's going to save the environment by the year 3,400. So um, I, I think BP takes this. I, I don't think all anyone right. cares about Exxon at all. Um, all right. I do. And I picked Exxon. Yeah, because you are you just okay boomered your way into Exxon. Um, so what? So what do you have? Uber and Lyft as Definitely. your... And again, this is, a, this is an easy one for me because, I mean... Uber is basically the, the, the Uber version of Lyft. So I'm just going to go. With, I'm just going with Uber. People I love with the, Uber the crap too. on Uber. Uber yeah. is. A, the, so that gives us a sweet 16 of um, yours is GM up against McDonald's and Exxon against Uber. And I have BlackRock versus McDonald's and BP versus Uber. The irony here is I think we probably agree on who goes to the Elite Eight. So who, who no. do you have? Oh, you think? I oh, think I, so. I, well, let's see. I, I'm going. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm picking McDonald's over GM. Uh, that is easy. the same. Yeah, and then I'm picking Uber over Exxon, which I think is also easy. And then Uber McDonald's, which I think is a great matchup. Uh, it really could go either way, but uh, pr- maybe because of the age we live in, all the millennials using Uber. I I, I just I'm gonna go. I'm picking Uber here. All right. So I went. Um. I I also have McDonald's and Uber coming out of the Sweet Sixteen. Mm-hmm. Um, and McDonald's, um, I, I think inevitably, I also think inevitably loses to Uber because I think what's going to happen is someone's going to get COVID-19 from an Uber and, okay. and, uh, and, and, and that, that will wipe from the collective consciousness, the fact that 500,000 people don't have money or a job, um, because of McDonald's, uh, at least temporarily, I think that could take the tournament. It takes one Uber rider to sneak, you know, either get it or to get mm. you know, sneeze and give it to somebody. And Uber could take the whole tournament off of that. Um, so, so here we are. All right. Our final four, your final four is Boeing versus Amazon and Facebook versus Uber minus Starbucks and Amazon and Facebook and Uber. Your final is do you want me to reveal it now or next reveal show? Reveal it now. All right, so I'm uh, I'm sticking with Facebook on the uh, in the the Eastern Division there. Uh, I'm I'm picking East Facebook all the way to the finals. And again, I I, I like my chances with Amazon coming out of the West. Uh, and those are the two big boys. I mean, Facebook versus Amazon can't hope for a better matchup. And then when it's all said and done. And I guess, like, just even even when there's no global pandemic, I believe in Facebook's ability to suck. <laughs> so, I, so I'm going to go with Facebook to win the tournament. That's my pick. I have the same exact thing, Amazon versus Facebook, in the final. I just couldn't get past. I do not think Star... I thought Starbucks might be the, up, the, the upsetter here. But something mm-hmm. has to happen for that to, to be a reality, and I couldn't figure out what would happen. So I've got Amazon and Facebook in the final, and for the Facebook victorious, we chose the exact same outcome, despite the fact that you fucked up so much along the way. Yeah, um, we'll see. Uh, uh, and that's and that's that's what we've got. That's what we've got. Yeah. So all right, reminder. Good job. Reminder to our listeners. Um, if, I'm hungry. Yes, let's wrap this up. Look, uh, if you if you don't know if you're confused about how you play this game or whatever, just e- e- go on our website and um, everything's up there. But if you need more information, just to hit us on LinkedIn or Twitter or 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 our webs our email us uh, and let us know. Uh, if you like what you heard, please subscribe and share this. We have a long quarantine ahead of us, and I know nobody's like out there doing much. And this is nice background noise. Um, it'd be even nicer if um, this background noise was funded background noise, and that doesn't happen until we get subscribers like you who love what they hear, sharing it with their friends. Like, hey, you're on mm-hmm. quarantine anyway. Take take a listen to this. This is some good shit. Um, that was Damien Rollis. I'm Matt Muscardi. We are Free Float Media. This was Business Pants. It is March 18th, 2020, my wife's birthday. Nothing like a COVID-19 oh, happy birthday. birthday. Um, yeah, well. So shout out to her um, uh, celebrating by uh, being at the yeah. front lines in a hospital. Um, Ooh. Yeah, fun times. And, uh, and uh, thanks to our executive team here. The team-
Uh, thanks to um, our advisor, Dan Rogoshnik. Thank you to our music from Todd Hovannik and the Asset Clowns. And thanks to John Walsh, who is our entire art department. Uh, and if you like this, uh, please go subscribe to our other podcast, The Market Medium. Um, I have some stuff in the works over there, um, some interviews I'm cutting now. But there's a couple pods up, and they're pretty good. Uh, anything else to add before we talk to you tomorrow? No. Uh, you know, stay, stay calm. I guess just do your best. Stay Take calm, care of your family. Carry on. Don't be an don't be an idiot. Listen to your local CDC and blah 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 blah. You know, that's a good PSA. We'll talk to you tomorrow, everyone. <laughs> Thanks. See ya.